Discontinuous transmission is a method of saving battery power for the MS. MS with the DTX function detects the input voice and turns the transmitter on only while voice is present. When there is no voice input, the transmitter is turned off. When the MS detects that speech is absent during the conversation, it sends out a signal called POST to report a transmission output state OFF for the TCH. Conversely, when the MS detects that speech is present again, it sends out a signal called PRE to report the transmission output state ON for the TCH. The POST signal incorporates background noise information from the MS, which enables the BTS to generate background noise. This ensures that the other subscriber on the call hears something and does not think that the mobile subscriber has ended the call. The MS transmits the POST signal periodically during a speech pause to enable the BTS to update the background noise. The normal burst is used to carry information on traffic channels and control channels BCCH, PCH, AGCH, SDCCH, SACCH, and FACCH. A normal burst consists of two 57-bit packets of encrypted data or speech, two flag bits, and a 26-bit training sequence, and two 3-bit packets called tail bits. The flag bits, stealing flags, indicate FACCH signaling is in progress. The training sequence is a known bit pattern used by the equalizer to create a channel model. The tail bits, TB, are always 0, 0, 0, and they are used to help the equalizer indicate the start and stop points. A time slot has room for 156.25 bits but the burst contains only 148 bits. The remaining 8.25 is empty and is called the guard period. The guard period is used to protect bursts from overlapping on each other. The frequency correction burst is used to carry the data in the frequency correction channel, FCCH. The Location-Based Services LBS function is based on the Mobile Positioning System MPSG, which delivers the location coordinates of the handsets. The position can be used to provide mobile subscribers with information and services that take advantage of the given geographical location. LBS work with all GSM handsets, enabling mobile operators to reach a mass market immediately. LBS provides a complete positioning portfolio with components based on the latest standard interfaces and protocols. Cell Global Identity and Timing Advance and Assisted Global Positioning System, AGPS, are the two positioning methods that are supported. MPSG consists of the Serving Mobile Positioning Center, SMPC, the Gateway Mobile Positioning Center, GMPC, and network features in the form of software extensions for the MSC VLR, HLR, and BSC. The GMPC and SMPC are Ericsson's implementation of the Standardized Nodes Gateway Mobile Location Center and Serving Mobile Location Center. The synchronization burst is used to carry the data in the synchronization channel, SCH. The access burst is used to carry data in the random access channel, RACH. It has a longer guard period to compensate for the fact that the mobile station does not know the timing advance value for transmission at first access.
The mobile station may be far away from the BTS, which indicates that the initial burst will arrive late. A dummy burst carries no information and is sent from the BTS on time slots that are carrying no traffic but providing carrier filling. The format is similar to the normal burst, except without flag bits. The Air Interface TDMA frame structure starts out with the bursts and builds up to the hyperframe. Signal strength measurements are performed in both the idle mode and in the active mode. Idle mode is when the mobile station is turned on and not in a call connected mode. That means the mobile is not sending signals. When the mobile station is turned on, it measures all the radio frequencies in the system and stores the signal strength for each one. The mobile station tunes to the frequency with the strongest signal and determines if it is a BCCH carrier. The BCCH data describes if the cell is available for the mobile station. The mobile tunes to the best cell to receive pages or to request a connection. The mobile continues to monitor all neighboring cells, and if a better cell is available, the mobile will then tune to that cell. Active mode is when the mobile is communicating with the network. Both the mobile station and the serving BTS perform signal strength measurements on the radio link. The mobile continuously reports to the system how strong the received signal strength is from the BTS. These measurements are used by the BSC to make decisions of target cells when handover is required. The structure of the downlink and the uplink is identical. The only difference is an offset in time. TS2 on the downlink does not occur at the same time as TS2 on the uplink. The offset is three time slots. This means that the mobile does not have to transmit and receive at the same time. If the mobile station is moving away from the base station during a call, it will have to send the burst in advance, in relation to synchronization time, in order for it to arrive at the given time slot at the base station. The base station will therefore continuously send a value, between 0 and 63, telling the MS how many bit times, that is 3.7 microseconds, ahead of synchronization time, it should transmit the burst. This is one of the parameters which puts a limit on the size of a cell. Frequency hopping occurs when the radio frequency of the physical channel for a conversation is changed at periodic intervals. Frequency hopping can be categorized as a tool to decrease the impact of interference. Two distinct types of frequency hopping are implemented in the RBS 2000, synthesizer hopping and baseband hopping. Synthesizer hopping is the process of tuning a transmitter's output frequency to a designated channel, sending the burst of information and then retuning the transmitter's output frequency to the next channel and repeating the process. Baseband hopping is the process of tuning multiple transmitters to designated output frequency channels. Each burst of information would be sent out by one of the transmitters, and then the next burst is directed towards a transmitter that is tuned to a different output frequency, repeating the process. One way to achieve diversity is to use two reception channels that are independently influenced by fading. The probability that a deep fading dip at the same time is affecting both of them is low. This method requires two RX antennas at the base station, 
independently receiving the same signal and therefore affected differently by fading dips.